Hello everyone, we're in the next podcast and this is Envisioning the Future, EPM, ERP and Finance Technology Trends with Andy Painoff. Andy, could you start by walking through your career journey? Hello, uh, yeah, thank you. Just a couple of words. I'm a specialist in modern enterprise transformation, primarily within the context of finance processes. And I started my enterprise career 10 years ago as a hands-on analyst in medium-sized projects, uh, which were related primarily to non-complicated supply chains. And since we had a lot of overhead costs, I went deeper into the problems of detailed cost analysis and unit economics across different products, different product lines, product dimensions, product directions, business directions at all. And I gradually delved into complex FNA and a models, especially location models, profitability models, and their automation. And uh, after that, when I got an opportunity to become a subject matter expert in implementation of transformation tools and then in creation of new transformation tools, I seized it and uh, for several years I worked on the development and implementation of around ERP consolidation planning tools and carrying complex transformation projects, uh, primarily for large business. Uh, this included uh, developing uh, transformation strategies for the companies, building the landscapes, primarily uh, for halting companies, multi-tenant multi companies, and solution selection advisory and implementation. And the next chapter in my career was when I started a personal practice in management accounting and tech consulting. I undertook several projects for large companies focusing on optimizing their profitability and real-time costing models. And uh, additionally, I played the core role in several projects of building enterprise architectures for medium-sized companies. And finally, I served as a solution advisor for unique development projects, particularly those related to forecasting, AI, and real-time analytics. And uh, for the past years, I have been working on finance architecture within the KT data processing ecosystem. It's uh, one of the largest uh, finance data processing ecosystems in Central Asia region. And my role involves aligning business strategy, product architecture, and finance data use cases. Also, as a volunteer, I continue to act as a researcher and an independent solution advisor for both companies who are interested in building their robust finance architectures, uh, primarily medium-sized companies, and startups uh, that aim to implement financial functionality into their solutions. Also, uh, non-ERP, non-finance solutions, when they deal with finance domain, I try to help them to navigate this domain in tech terms. Thank you so much. So your recent comprehensive analysis delves into various software styles in automating the cost accounting domain. What sparked your interest in comparing these distinct styles and what overarching impact do you think or do you hope your research will have? Uh, I've also been interested in end-to-end -end tasks. For example, ERP implementation is an end-to-end -end task but also we have some tasks which are not covered but only by only one system, even if it's ERP or PLM or another very large system. For example, when you work on life cycle costing to calculate the most accurate product cost, starting from its design and marketing research and extending to the costs of manufacturing each batch. And then when you want also to analyze the costs of after sales service, changes in customer service process and then especially if you want this data to be updated in real-time mode with actuals you understand that you must look at a wide range of technologies and you realize that each of them is just a piece of big picture and the main issue is that we can see the same tasks being implemented in different solutions and in different types of solutions. For example, data mapping, transformation, even cash flow planning, they all can be implemented in cash flow planning 
in uh, systems in cooperational models of ERP. They can be implemented in Excel. Some companies use BI for these tasks. Some companies use ETM systems. And you become curious if all the solutions are equally good for all the tasks, or maybe some systems are better in some cases, some systems better in another case. And then you start to analyze why exactly. Yes, because when we combine technique with business, we can understand why and what exactly happens. And um, having such a big picture, we can achieve some benefits such as, of course, primarily we can easier learn new systems. We can easier analyze gaps in the systems we already use. We can understand their limitations and the cause of their limitations. We can focus on these limitations when we explore and select new software systems. And we make IT landscape decisions better. And also from the vendor's perspective, it's very important to choose the architectural style for different functionalities. I understand how it's important to select and adjust the right architectural decision, not for entire solutions even today, but even for each component, for each functional model to provide maximum value for your customers. Because now we have extremely lot of opportunities as vendors, as software developers. And finally, we can forecast technical trends better because new features, new capabilities, even if they seem revolutionary, usually they don't instantly and drastically uh, break the existing frameworks. They are usually built upon them and they uh, expand them. And I think it can help us navigate the future. Thank you so much. So in your analysis, you highlighted the traditional approach of the transactional style in ERP models. How do you see its role evolving in the integration of emerging technologies? Uh, first, I probably must mark what I mean when I say uh, transactional like software style. I am not so much talking about the specifics of data processing in their physical storage layer. Rather, I mean how the system functionality is designed, how the user experience is built, how data, data structures are presented to the user, how the manipulation is designed. And this is a classical software style, yes, which is based on cards, card-like interfaces, flat lists, uh, rigid calculation procedures, uh, ledgers and so on and uh, until recently such document based or transactional based style a large part of systems uh, between the systems and models for office related domains were designed on this style a, this includes core finance models controlling uh, supply relation systems it asset management project management even crm systems and i thought it was partly associated with internal database logic, but more, more. It's about paradigm, it's about vision, it's about the way we uh, think when designing the software system. And on the other hand, there are other classes of software systems such as Excel, EPM, BI. They were radically different from this transactional light mechanisms, yes. And in other words, there was a strong polarization. but if you think what will happen next, I think that in solutions which are designed mostly on transactional like style, the share of the style will continue to decrease. Of course, more and more operational systems and models uh, will contain mechanisms that were previously associated with only analytical software, for example. However, at the same time, I think that transactional like software design will teach us a lot when designing other systems and functionality. For example, uh, other systems will try to inherit such strict data models, such capable object-based design, which allows us to, for example, convenient uh, versionize the objects to analyze the history, what happened with the object, for example, with card of customer, yes, with card of employee, what happened with it, uh, relations between these cards, 
uh, multi attributes and ability to use uh, alternative names for dimensions, elements, high reliability, and finally processing power for simultaneous multi multi user data editing. Because for now, analytical systems, for example, they are in their larger part are about reading data. Yes, but they not always can handle uh, data editing. Uh, uh, processes as well and also I think that the uh, transactional likes of software systems will uh, be leaders in developing the software development ecosystems I mean such things as low code they will integrate it with the modern ecosystems and uh, it will be a great integration it will be a great coexistence of low code usual code uh, user work and this all will be about the same abstractions not as today because today we know that uh, there are different layers of abstractions technically i mean uh, exactly technical question yes and uh, it makes some difficulties in progressing in progress of our software but i think fu in future and exactly the transaction like systems they will show us how to make this better cool thank you so given spreadsheets user-friendly nature and the versatility particularly particularly um microsoft excel do you foresee a shift in how they're utilized within business in favor of more structured systems uh, yes, in theoretical space, we still often blame Excel. We often say that abstractly, it's simply bad for planning or simply bad for supply chain or some other tasks. But in practical space, vice versa, many companies still continue to use Excel for various, various, various tests. And based on the detailed analysis, I think that optimal balance lies somewhere in the middle. And I believe that in future, uh, the trends will be associated with finding this balance and uh, uh, companies will strive to find the optimum between overuse and the Excel and the blaming Excel. Uh, however, I think it can be possible in three different scenarios. The first scenario is, of course, the replacement of Excel. Yes, uh, in some cases, indeed, Excel will not be used anymore and this trend is ongoing and will continue. However, its pace is far from what we could have predicted before. And the second scenario is collaboration. I mean the preservation and development of Excel's transit role in corporate data flows. I mean, many systems will still develop their connections, connectors with Excel, and also we will build robust enterprise architectural practices which uh, at the organizational aspect will help us to make strict data flow management at the organizational level and in this way we also will use excel very effectively but also avoid uh, its side efforts and the third scenario it's very interesting and uh, I think it's possible to forecast changes of Excel development itself. And this path is already under underway because uh, there is even a possibility that Excel could add the functionality which it doesn't have now and address its uh, shortcomings faster than other types of software systems can provide the flexibility which Excel does provide now. And understanding Excel and Google Sheets capabilities, their trends, seeing their R&D budgets, R&D activities of the vendors, I can say that the competition between spreadsheets and financial tools will be unpredictable. And I wouldn't dare to make a forecast about its outcome. Okay, thank you. So you've outlined BI tools, powerful data visualization and analysis capabilities. How do you suggest business businesses balance the use of BI tools with the flexibility of spreadsheets for ad hoc data manipulation? 
definitely AI will partially provide more flexibility in modeling. Uh, the role of BI as a handy tool will increase. Data models in BI will uh, become more flexible. They will include unstructured data, for example, natural language data, image data, uh, graphs. They will enable uh, us to join the structured and unstructured data and get insights. However, BI does have two fundamental limitations, and I think it will have. Uh, the first one is anything related to manual data input, and the second one is cases of extreme flexibility in work scenarios. Uh, in those cases, Excel is, of course, still the uh, leader. And uh, here I think several scenarios are possible. The first scenario is if BI vendors really provide customers with such a high level of flexibility that companies will no longer need to use Excel. Indeed, I do not consider this scenario likely because BI has not even incorporated EPM functions. However, EPM systems are much closer to BI than Excel and BI could make this, but they didn't do. And therefore, I don't expect that in future it also will happen. The second scenario is very realistic. I mean, when BI and Excel will refer to a single source of trust, which will be common for both of them. And the third scenario is creation of native ecosystems where BI and Excel will exchange data in bidirectional mode. And this is possible uh, within vendor dependent ecosystems. And it's also probable, but in the short terms. So, if to summarize, I would say that popularity of BI will continue to grow. There will be an increase in flexibility in BI, including through the use of AI. Uh, in the near future, there will be expanded capabilities for local integration from Excel to BI and from BI to Excel for ad hoc. However, in the strategic perspective, I think that external single source of trust will be developed. And this includes data uh, which is now calculated in real time mode in on the fly, uh, which is dynamically calculated and is not reusable. Tomorrow, I think all the data even calculated on fly can be stored in the external single source of trust. Cool. So considering EPM's crucial role in strategic financial management, what advancements in EPM do you find most promising for enhancing budgeting and forecasting processes? Mm -hmm. Definitely, I think EPM will have more flexibility in master data, greater integration with master data, and better understanding of the business master data. Uh, and generally, integration will continue to grow. Uh, also, EPM, I think, will have a better understanding of the business. Currently, I thought it allows uh, to create cataloged financial models. These models are still primarily a chain of interconnected tables, sets of dimensions, etc. And uh, I believe that in future, EPM will integrate more extensively with external systems and will more, in more intelligent way, understand the sense of the data, understand what exactly does happen in your business, not only figures, not only financial, uh, figures, but the physical processes uh, under them. Uh, so also, I think it will know more about raw data because for now, EPM is more about aggregated data. It's still more about aggregated data, but to know more about your business, to process more data, it must work more with single transactions. And I think it will be. Uh, also, I think more universal allocations can be developed and of course of course forecasting tools using ai and also i think ai will not only analyze the dependencies between drivers and results but ai will also can proactively understand dependencies between factors indicators data which seem not to be interconnected so not user will say uh, the depend which dependencies are happening in its business, but AI will can will, will help him. And of course, I think more workflow, 
more workflow, more uh, integrations with best and breed solutions, in particular RPA automation, VPMS systems, workflow orchestration systems, and also better collaboration, better automation of routine tasks, better automatic, including AI powered monitoring of adherence to planning processes, business processes within finance departments, and so on. Cool, thank you. So your research highlights the specialization of cost chain modeling in detailed cost analysis. Can you share any innovative applications of this style that have significantly impacted business strategy? Uh, of course, I'm not providing a comprehensive list, yes, but I can name just some solutions like cost perform, Facton, 3C software, and also I must highlight a range of functionalities within PLM and manufacturing environment. For example, SAP lifecycle costing, which is now part of SAP PLM, uh, custom functionality of Siemens Team Center, and a priori software, for example. And what's common for the systems and why they are different from EPM, from BI, from ERP, they have slightly better understanding of physical processes compared to EPM and BI. And on the other hand, they are slightly more oriented on strategic planning compared to ERP systems. Yes, for example, they better handle breakdown of bombs, especially nested bombs. They uh, some bad to work with universal calculation rules, which can be applied to uh, long cost chains. And generally, they can allow us to better and in a more convenient way to navigate the long cost chains, which cons consist of many nodes in the cost processes. You discussed the integration challenges among different software styles. What strategies would you recommend to businesses to foster a more fluid and in interoperable IT landscape? Uh, the first thing to make better landscape, focus on the landscape. It's similar to learning and following language. Yes, to become fluent, you must speak. Uh, always start with logic, logic first. So the general enterprise architecture practices, enterprise architecture theory, it's very useful today in finance digitalization. And another advice is fail fast. Please experiment already now with different integration mechanisms starting with small tasks. Because you must have your own internal experience with working with different uh, integration solutions and technologies. And after that, you can understand how to better break down your processes into the systems. Thank you. So you advocate for a future direction towards modular composable ERP systems. Mm -hmm. How should businesses start preparing for this shift to ensure seamless integration and data consistency? Oh, in general, the same. Uh, and also enhance feedback from IT. Make um, more direct and more bidirectional uh, connection between IT and business. Stimulate competency expansion within the teams. Focus on expanding skills rather than deepening existing ones even, because, because we must collaborate better tomorrow. It's even more important than maybe to know, to have a deep expertise in particular part of solution. Uh, it's more important to collaborate, to know the context. And also, please uh, model your processes. Model your processes and find the optimal level of modeling. Because if you make only very de detailed models of processes, uh, it's not enough. If you have only very high level uh, processes, it is also not enough. Please try to find an up of medium, medium level modeling, which will allow different domains to collaborate, to understand the processes and to focus on the most important things. Thank you so much. So as the enterprise software landscape evolves, 
what cross-system trends should professionals be aware of and how can they collaborate effectively to navigate these changes? Oh, shortly, there will be constant changes in software boundaries, in boundaries of software types. However, the constant change should not confuse you because patterns will repeat. So please learn patterns, uh, not only software. And uh, systems integrability may increase, of course. We have to face new technologies of uh, data integration at all. Uh, Hard-coded integrations will gradually become more flexible and software systems will not only exchange the updates and data, but they also can exchange updates in data structures. And uh, also, I think that if you want to collaborate in future, yes, if you want to navigate in future, you must first understand the trends, for example, dimensional modeling, AI and forecasting, dimensional based formula management, MDM normalizations. Uh, in general, learn patterns, general patterns, not particular solutions. Also, I think it's very important to learn different software and aggregate them into the general classes, general, uh, how to say, generally to track the patterns, to track the patterns to make a huge horizon because there is a lot of software and we must understand general kinds of them. Okay, so lastly, based on your in-depth analysis and predictions, where do you see the future of finance technology heading, especially in terms of software styles, role in business process automation? Uh, no, I think firstly, we instead of traditional SQL databases, we will have some much more advanced technologies of data storing, which will support different data form formats. Uh, data structures will also evolve and uh, different systems will uh, support images, files, uh, natural language processing elements, uh, associative relationship and so on. And uh, there also may be some universalization in how different software systems, for example, process formulas, how you build formulas, how you build models, uh, maybe new integration protocols can be developed. And it will allow us much less think about techniques, but much more uh, we must think about business and about the optimal composition. And uh, I think AI in future can monitor data integrity between software systems, uh, data structures, the general patterns of your data across different systems. And it also can provide us uh, some suggestions on additional data to model and identify the data we need, uh, identify which data structures we must add. But anyway, AI only can can help us, it can't work instead of us. And our internal competences, they must grow. They must grow already today. And I think that the role of skillfully composing this micro, micro solutions, micro systems, which will emerge tomorrow instead of today's enough large systems, uh, it will be crucial. Uh, thank you so much for the insightful interview today. It's been wonderful having you. So yes, let's do a couple of podcasts in the future and have a good day. Thank you very much. I will be glad to collaborate in future and have a good day. Thank you.